All right, so today we're going to get started drawing isometrics. So, so far we've taken isometrics and made the multi-views, right? How are you guys doing with that? Are you okay? That's, that's usually the easier way to go. It's usually a little easier to go from this to this. Today what we're going to do is we're going to start going from this back to that. So usually this is a little bit harder to, 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 to get in your head, um, but it's how you have to get it because a lot of times they're good drawings that don't have an isometric at all. All it'll have is the multi -beam. So you have to take it from this to an actual thing that you're going to make. So it's really important to know just by seeing the multi-view what that is and what different things on the multi-views represent and how to figure out what this is going to be. Okay. <clears throat> so an isometric, remember the lines that we have at 30 and vertical, those are the lines we can measure. If we have an angled surface, can we just measure up that angle? No, right? So if I needed to do a line like that, I couldn't just measure that distance along that line, right? No. I could I could measure that, 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 and that, and then draw the line in. Yep. <clears throat> so what's an ellipse? Uh, I know this, but I can't So not this week, but next week you're gonna need your ellipse template. We look straight at a circle, it's a circle, right? Yeah, this is like it's, it's uh, we look at a circle from the side, it's a rectangle, right? If we look at it from the angle, it's an ellipse. So next week I'll show you how to use the ellipse template and how to line it up on your paper to go. But we'll have three basic ellipses. We have ellipse on the top plane, right, on the top, like this. We have an ellipse on this side, like that. Ellipse on this side, like that. So we have that, that, and that. Those are kind of our three angles of the ellipse. So next week I'll show you how to use your ellipse template and line it up on the graph paper and stuff uh, so it'll be work right. Do you have to use an ellipse template to draw yes. an ellipse? It helps. It's just like you can draw a circle without a compass, right? Or without a circle template, but it's easier with them than freehand. <clears throat> so if you want a freehand ellipse, we can do it just like we can a circle. So if, when we were sketching circles, how did we do it? One quadrant at a time, right? Very good. What was the first thing we did before we even found the quadrant? We got the center. So what's the next thing? Found the edges. Yeah, we kind of did that box, right? The bounding yeah. box. So I'm going to kind of come up. So, yeah, I'm finding my quadrants, and then I can use the, the quadrants. So this is one I'm going to do on the side plan. <clears throat> so I'll mark those quadrants a little better. So when we were drawing the circle, how do we keep it kind of circular? What were some of the tips? Yeah, do a quadrant at a time. So we'll do the same thing here. And what about where it was hitting the quadrant? What was special about that point? If we look over here at the quadrants, if we had that box in here, What's happening where it hits the quadrants? Touching. Yeah, it's touching and what else? What else is special there that we can use to help line ourselves up? So how is it touching that square? What what's that line in that circle at? What what kind of relationship is that? 
It's tangent, right? Yeah. So that means they're kind of at this exact point, they're both going the same direction. Same thing here. But instead of going this side, right, now it's going to go up and down and over and down. Like that. We can still use that to help guide our direction for the ellipse. So from here I want to kind of pull it this way and then straight down. Something like that. <laughs> so that's pretty good. Thank you. Oops, I do that on the top. Did my answer on the top plane. So let's try that again. This time we'll try it on the top. Something like that, right? I got a little bit of a <laughs> that's pretty close, right? Oh. Wrong piece. Got okay, moving stuff around. <laughs> it is pretty close, right? Kind of aiming to, to get that kind of tangent, you can get something that's pretty close. Okay? So if you can't afford an ellipse template, see if you can borrow one from a friend um, or just get it in and maybe sketch it real lightly a couple times so you can see if you can get it kind of even and then darken it in. Okay? So you can see the, the general shape of it. Okay. Questions? So here we have an orthographic. We're going to make it an isometric. <clears throat> so, where do you think we should start with this? How how should we start? The front of it. So it's always going to, what? The front of here. Yeah. Yeah, so we're trying to figure out how we're going to put this on the paper. So it might be good to put that vertical edge here and have the angle over here, something like that. We can see that side, have the, this be our right side. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is I always like to work front to back. Why do you think I, I want to work front to back? <clears throat> what happens in the back? Can't see it. You can't see all of it, right? No. Because stuff in the front, it's like if okay, this, you can't see any of the stuff in the back when I hold this like this, right? Right. So why would I start by drawing all this stuff in isometric? Because isometric, we, we don't show hidden lines. So I'm going to start with just what's in the front, because that way I can, I know that's going to stay. So I'm going to keep that, and then I can kind of work my way backwards. Okay. So it's going to be, and then, then when I have my grid, I'm going to try and, if I have this upper corner, I can start there, or I can start at the lower corner, there, right? So I can kind of work from there, and that is set that up, and then start working back from there. So I'll start with here. That went over three. Seven. Seven. 
make sure you count out your squares. If you happen to start further back, counting them is important because if I go from here to here, that's no longer seven, right? Seven would be up here. This one, all the depths are straight back. Could I make those just go straight back? Uh, yeah. yeah. So that's five. actually those will actually cut out like that. But if that was actually a cutout back there. What would I need to do? Break some of that back line. I need to. So, would this line right here be there? Yeah. No. No. So, let me get away some of that. So, that would have been like that, right? One more. <coughs> oh, I need to score one. bottom piece? No. Probably not, but let's make sure just to just to see. So I can kind of come down with a, a construction line and see that yeah, there's not going to be anything there. Because that's kind of where that other the wall of the, the back corner is. So I wouldn't see it. If this was further this way, I might see a little bit of that line, right? So you always have to kind of think about, okay, does anything show back in there? Okay. <clears throat> could you have drew it the other way? Drew what? Turned it that way? Yeah, could have turned yeah. it around so I could see that cut, yeah. that cut out. Yeah, I could have done that. <clears throat> do you want to do that? Do you want to draw it the other way so we can see that cut out? Yes, no? Yeah. Yeah? All right.
I'll just put this corner right here on this edge. And have it go that way. It looks big enough. Yeah. <clears throat> so it's going to be backwards, so it's going to be a little harder to see. We're going to be flipping around. So since I'm starting on that back corner, Again, you see that back corner now? Oops. See how I'm kind of yeah. starting back there? And I'm just making this shape out. Now I'm ready to do this edge, which was six. see any of these lines because they're all back in there, right? Yep. So that's all I'm going to see from that direction. That make sense? Yeah. All right. So again, whichever way you go, start in a, in a corner, just kind of work and see what you can get by going up and back and, and to get the rest of your shape. Here's, now that we've done that one, this one's easy, right? This is just another profile. So again, we'll just start here. Let's make this one a little harder. making this a little harder for us. Make it like that. <clears throat> so now we're going to get started. Can you guys see what this looks like now? So this part here, that's this piece, right? Yep. What level is this at? That's down here, right? Yep. And this piece here? That's up here. <clears throat> so now that we have this, we need to start working it. So since it, it comes all the way to the front corner, let's start from the front corner of our grid. So it's five high. Two, down three, down three, 
over two. Over two, right? Oh, two, my bad. Okay. And now go back one and over one, right? Yeah. Right? We came over two. And we're going to go back two, over one. So we're going to go back two, over one. So once I'm starting to get here, let's start filling in some of these other faces. So, like this face, I've almost got done. If I connect that and that, yeah. that's four. That's four. I've got that face done. If I connect that and that, now I've got that face done. Right? Yeah. So work on connecting, finishing off faces when you as soon as you can. I can also hear that edge right there, right? Actually, that one's going to go one, two, three, four. Four. Then up three. Back three. Down one, right? What else? Back. Okay. You got to do the back part. Yeah, I've still got to do all that back yeah. there, right? But at least I've got the front, I've got the offsets, so it's going back and space correctly. So what should I do next? Top of the back. Top up here? Yeah, or you can start in the front on the bottom. Or you can start here. Can I just jump right back to this corner? If that's the corner it ends at. Okay. Should I just start drawing a line here somewhere? No. Project. No. <laughs> Always start from what you've got. So I can either start from here and go back, or I can start from here and go back. Don't just start from a new thing. And don't start just up here. As soon as you have something drawn, only build from what you have. Don't restart up here. Okay? And don't just try and redraw this on the top or on the side. Because remember, it's gonna, you're making an object out of some flat views. So let's go back. Five. Five over two. Five. This went down three. Connect that. Now where should I go? Should I start, fit, should I fit, or here, or should I work here? Okay. Here or here? What's going to happen with this line? Isn't this going to hide some of that stuff? So it would be better to work up here. But if I just came from here, that would come over three. But then won't this one go back like that? But how do you know it only goes two? Because this line's three. You can kind of see it though, right? Yeah. But let's measure it. So. I like to kind of work on this corner first before I start connecting things. Because I know this stuff that I'm going to see, right? This is always going to be seen. Stuff back here, not always. So from here, I'll finish off that. Now I can just take that. It goes three, but we're only going to draw it to there. Where? Where? Here? Here, what about it? An edge right there? What about that? No, it's sketch there. Because this vertical line is that line, right? That line is that line. That line is that line. That line is that line. <clears throat> what do you notice about most of the corners on that? They connect. Connect to what? So like this, like that corner, that corner.
What are all those corners? Have in common? The directions? The blue. They're facing you? The field. What's different from the ones I circled from the ones I didn't circle? Oh, and this one. They have three corners. Three, right? They have three lines going into them? So you can see most of the corners should have three lines connecting. Only if it's a back, a bottom, or an inside corner that's you're not going to see, will it have two. So if you do it, you get something that only has two corners, look and see if there should be a third one. So anytime you look and you have only two lines going to it, look and see why you don't have that third line. Like here, the line's going down, so you're not going to see it. Here, the line's going up behind it, you're not going to see it. But always check, that's something that's missed most commonly. Okay? Questions? Yes, no? You guys doing okay? Do one more. Good, bad? Good? Uh. Good. A lot of people don't want to say anything. Good. Doing good? You guys understanding it? Um, we don't have any angled stuff this week, do we? Isn't the lab an no. angle? Uh, next week, well, I'll do this that next exercise next week because it has an angle and isometric. Um, Isn't the lab one we're doing <coughs> isometric? Oh, where's my book? Where's my book? Does someone have my book? Can I borrow it? Oh, you borrowed it. I don't think she has. Oh, is that mine? So this is the homework. This is the first page. One A is the first page. So this is the first page of the homework. So you get the top, front, and side view, and you have to make that symmetric. This is practice. So like on this one, if you start this this back this front corner here, you can go there, right? And then you kind of work your way back. Same thing here. Put the first corner here. Work your way back. This one, it's missing the front view. So you need to finish the front view and then make the isometric. You can start on the isometric before you finish the front view. That's okay. You can kind of work back and forth. Um, so we'll do that. Same thing on this one. On this one here, there are several possible correct answers. Because yeah. of how these hidden lines are, the information it gives you, there's at least um, at least two, maybe three or four correct answers for it. As long as your your answer is correct based on the top and side view, it's good. Okay. So that's why sometimes you have to have all three views so you know what it's going to be. On this one only, right? What? On this one only? Uh, yeah, that's the only one that has multiple answers. Just because of how those hidden lines are, there's one answer that it, it's recommending, but there's other ways it can be done and still have those same hidden lines.
Also, I have a lab today. MVI 2A is the lab. So you have the isometrics, and you have to make the multi view. Turn that in today. I'll turn, turn it in when you're done. This one is in the bookcase over there. And this one is watch uh, watch your lines. Count how far you're going down these. If that's the only opening on this. Count how far you're going down here, and then look. If you get stuck still, look at the sample in the box. It's in the second drawer. Because <clears throat> everyone makes the same mistake on this one. Because they just look at it and they they do what they think with their eyes, not what they count. Okay. So go by what you count, not by what you think is right. So if, you, if there's a discrepancy between what you're counting or measuring and what you think. What you're measuring is always going to be the one that's right. What you think is going to be wrong. How many, how many classes you've had or how long you've been doing it. <laughs> you've seen me make mistakes too, right? <coughs> Same thing, I go by what I think instead of what I'm counting. So always go by what you can measure, what you can count. That's going to give you the correct answer. Questions? You do by any class? What? It's Tuesday. We know we talk about like this for like 10, 20 minutes before I start lecturing. Twenty first.